So the first part of the, the recipe is obviously mackerel. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly fillet these mackerel uh, in preparation ready for the, the mackerel fish cakes. Just take a knife at the back of the pectoral fins down to the backbone and normal fillet. Another side. Down to the backbone and then follow the backbone. For the second one. And again, I'm just going to tidy these up, uh, removing most of the rib cage. Now you don't need to worry too much about removing as many bones at this stage as they're going to be cooked first and then I'm going to pick the meat while they're still warm and that will remove any other excess bones or parts that you don't want to keep. Now obviously guys don't chuck these away, they're excellent for bait. And there you have it. Fresh mackerel fillets ready for the next stage.
Hey guys, welcome back. Just go through the ingredients for the uh, mackerel fish cakes. First I've got the uh, mackerel which has been picked, deboned and most of the brown meat removed. Next I've got crushed potatoes. These are just uh, Jersey potatoes, baby Jersey potatoes that have been uh, pre-boiled in salted water and I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. I've got cooked spring onions or scallions, approximately three which have been sorted and sweated off uh, without colouring. And I've got some fresh scallions which I'm going to use just to give a bit of texture. Pro probably about two heads of the green part of the spring onion. And finally I've got lemon zest which is approximately a tablespoon or just under a tablespoon of lemon zest. And I've got gram flour which I'm going to use to coat the, the fish cakes. Now you can use breadcrumbs or panko breadcrumbs or plain flour if you want. But this is gram flour, it just gives it a, a different taste, uh, a little bit nutty. Okay, so add your pre-cooked fresh mackerel. Add your cooked spring onions. Add your fresh spring onions. And finally add your lemon zest. Okay, so once you've got all your ingredients in the bowl, just another two grains of the Salt, two grains of black pepper. Bearing in mind that the mackerel was already seasoned and so was the potatoes already seasoned. Now I like to use my hands because it stops you breaking up too much of the mackerel meat which you want to try and keep in good chunks. So let's get started. Hey guys, on to the next step, uh, what I've got here is I've got a chopping board which is covered in cling film uh, or saran wrap, whatever you call it. And the reason I've got this on is when it comes to shaping, when it comes to uh, coating the, the fish cakes, it makes it easier to get off the board, uh, it stops it sticking as much. So what I've got here is a cake cutter, Now you can use anything you want, you can use your hands if you like to shape them and you can make them as big or as small as you want. Uh, make little small ones for a bite size or I'm actually going to use this size cutter as it's going to be used for a dinner time. You just put it on the board and fill your cutter up. And the cutter's already been oiled on the sides to stop it sticking for taking it off. And you want to force it down so it gets into the corners and is more of a circular shape. As you can see, some nice big chunks of fish showing. Just 
I am the cutter again. Simple as. Hey guys, I'll crack on and do the rest of these and I'll see you in a bit. Right, so that's all the fish cakes made up. Uh, the actual mixture itself is just, it's not quite cold, it's warm. The potatoes were just uh, almost cold, the fish was almost cold. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier when the thing, when your ingredients are less slightly warmer. Rather than freezing cold, your potatoes will be really hard. So what I'm going to do with these now is put them in the refrigerator. Uh, preferably, you could do this obviously ahead of time, but you really want them in the fridge or the refrigerator for at least an hour. And this will firm up the texture uh, of the fish cakes, which will make it easier to coat and it keeps them together during the frying process. So I'll just pop these in the fridge. Okay guys, so the next stage of the process is going to be I'm going to start cooking the mackerel fish cakes. Now I've got the frying pan on high heat just now, warming up and I'll turn that down to a medium heat once it's heated through and I've got approximately a centimetre of vegetable oil in the pan. Get my fish cakes ready to dredge in the uh, gram flour. So I'll get on and start dredging them in the flour and putting them in the pan. So once they're dredged in the flour, you ideally want to start cooking them straight away. But if you had coated them in breadcrumbs or panko breadcrumbs, you could leave them uh, for a good period of time in the fridge. And in fact, it's probably better that way because the coating will adhere to the the fish cake a lot better. So the oil's been on high heat. I'm just turn it around to a medium heat. I just don't want them to burn too quickly. Okay, so I cooked the other four fish cakes uh, for about seven and a half to eight minutes, uh, three and a half to four minutes on either side on a medium heat until they were golden brown, I like this, the top of this one. And this one's had the same, it's just coming up for eight minutes, cooked on either side until it's ready. Now I've got the other four in the oven, keeping warm, uh, ready for dinner time. But I'll just show you this one inside. Right, so that's it guys, that's my take on uh, mackerel fish cakes, another alternative that you can do with mackerel and uh, they are slightly delicious. Yep, I think you'll like this one if you haven't done it already. 
uh, but I will go well with Rob's gooseberry chutney that's on uh, Cornish Shore and Kayak Fisherman. Give him a check out, he does a lot of catch and cook. And uh, hope you enjoyed this video guys and thanks very much for watching.